Hi, welcome to another episode of Brand Fever. Previously, we covered the journey of Tony Tan Kaktiong and the rise of Jollibee. In this episode, we will focus on how big Jollibee really is. Ever since Jollibee went public, they've been going on a shopping spree, snatching brands they consider having potential for explosive growth. And so let's go back to 1993 on the date of their IPO. In July of 1993, 18 years since it was founded, Jollibee, under the Jollibee Foods Corporation or JFC, is listed in the Philippine Stock Exchange with an IPO price of 9 pesos per share. By October of that same year, three months after they went public, JFC shares rose to 20 pesos per share. That's a 135% increase from their date of IPO. It's safe to say that at this point, Jollibee has accumulated a war chest of capital. But most importantly, after years of experience, they now have the expertise in maneuvering the fast food industry. And I'm quite sure beating McDonald's did give their confidence a massive boost. It probably made them realize, hey, we know how the game works now, and we have a system that works. Why not acquire other fast food brands, apply this system, add them to our network, and maybe they will dominate their own niche. And because of the money they raised from their IPO, they now have even more capital. And with more money, Jollibee took bigger steps and kick-started the buying spree. Their first acquisition was Greenwich Pizza. If you're unfamiliar with Greenwich Pizza, they're currently the largest pizza chain in the Philippines with a little under 300 locations. The year they were acquired, in 1994, Greenwich Pizza only had 50 locations. That was when Jollibee purchased 80% of the business. They would then acquire the remaining 20% in 2006. I think it's with this acquisition when we first see the impact of the Jollibee system because as soon as they were acquired, new products were released, stores were redesigned, new packaging was rolled out, basically giving them a makeover JFC knew they needed in order for them to dominate their own category. And two years after the date of acquisition, Greenwich Pizza would double their annual sales to 200 million pesos compared to the 100 million pesos they raked in the previous year. What stands out for me here was that Greenwich still only had 53 locations at this point, meaning they doubled their sales whilst only adding three locations. So you can kind of conclude that their growth was not a result of expansion, but of optimization. Jollibee's system made each store more effective and more efficient. So now, knowing that their system works, Jollibee became more confident than ever that they can apply this strategy over and over again, buying leading brands where they're improving them and dominating competitors. And next on their list is another wildly famous brand here in the Philippines, Chowking. It was the start of the new millennium when Jollibee acquired Chowking. Chowking was, and even up to now, is the market leader in the Chinese fast food segment in the Philippines. Officially, they became a subsidiary of JFC on January 1, 2000. I'm pretty sure they could have done this in late December of 1999, but then I guess having it officially on the first day of the new millennium was just too hard to pass. And I'm not sure if this had any significance in terms of good luck, but I guess it worked because today, in 2019, Chowking now has over 579 locations and has a dominant presence here in the Philippines. And if you're here in the Philippines, you will often see a Jollibee and Chowking branch near each other. Even though Chowking dominates the Chinese fast food category, it still feels like a huge understatement. Because don't get me wrong, there are other Chinese restaurants here in the Philippines, but none of them are in the Chinese fast food category. And if there are other brands in this category, they're probably not big enough to matter. They're just not at the level that Chowking is in. And so I would consider this acquisition to be another big win for Jollibee. Tony Tan Kaktiong's goal went beyond just building an empire here in the Philippines. He always wanted to go further, to go global. In fact, it is one of the reasons why he rejected the opportunity of franchising a McDonald's location. It's because he always knew that Jollibee was going to go beyond the Philippines. He wanted to conquer Asia and eventually the world. This was evident when they acquired Yonghe King. It's a fast food chain in China. This would mark the first of several acquisitions Jollibee would make to expand their presence in China. This is followed by consecutive acquisitions of Hong Zhuang Yuan, a congee chain, and San Ping Wang. Going back to the Philippines, in 2005, they acquired Red Ribbon. Red Ribbon is known for its affordable cakes and pastries. Jollibee acquired Red Ribbon for 1.8 billion pesos. This was another big purchase for Jollibee. Only difference is, Red Ribbon is trailing behind Goldilocks, the leading brand in the category in the Philippines. And even after Jollibee acquired Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon would continue to be in second place behind Goldilocks. Red Ribbon may be in second place, but the company is still massively successful. This shows you that JFC also have its sets of hits and misses, considering that they have made investments that they would later on divest from. And first on the list is Delifrance. In 2010, they sold Delifrance, now known as Cafe France. Jollibee said that they're letting go of Delifrance because they're focusing their effort toward bigger brands. 
I guess it's just code for saying it's not really working out for them. But then again, the move does make sense, and the reason for selling is quite consistent based on their next few divestments. They closed down Manong Pepe Carrenderia. The brand used to serve Filipino food at very affordable price points. Now, these divestments were part of JFC's big plan because this prepared the company to focus resources on their next big acquisition, Mang Inasal. In 2011, Jollibee acquired 70% of Manginasal for 3 billion pesos. Manginasal is a very popular barbecue fast food chain in the Philippines, known especially for their flagship product, which is their grilled chicken. No one expected Manginasal to be this big because the chicken barbecue category was already saturated, and yet Manginasal broke through, growing rapidly to over 345 locations in under 7 years. With the growth rate as aggressive as Manginasal's, it didn't take long to get Jollibee's attention. We will be discussing Manginasal's meteoric rise in depth in another episode. But the point is, Jollibee paid a premium in acquiring the brand but didn't mind the steep price because it knew the potential of Manginasal. Once again, it has added another market leader and probably one of their best acquisitions to date. Eventually, JFC will end up buying the remaining 30% of the company in 2016, taking full ownership of the Manginasal brand. The Manginasal acquisition completes Jollibee's portfolio of local brands here in the Philippines. If you see a Jollibee, a Manginasal will be nearby, as well as a Chowking and Greenwich and Red Ribbon and other brands JFC will acquire that we will discuss later on. Jollibee didn't stop there. In our previous episode, we covered Jollibee's rivalry with McDonald's since they compete for the same category, and it makes this next acquisition even more interesting interesting since they would basically acquire another of McDonald's big rivals, but this time, its rival in the United States. So in less than a year, after acquiring Manginasal in 2011, they got the Philippine franchise of Burger King, taking a 54% stake, making it the majority franchisee of the Burger King brand in the Philippines. It's quite a cheeky move by Jollibee, and I'm sure it's incredibly annoying if you're looking at it from McDonald's point of view. A bit of an, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing. But this move makes financial sense. Jollibee states that they made this move to gain a foothold into the premium segment of the hamburger category. Burger King products are generally more expensive than Jollibee products, meaning they're catering to consumers in a higher social class. Jollibee then said the group was expecting the premium price segment of the market to grow appreciably in the years ahead as the Filipino consumer standard of living rises from the growing economy. So yeah, it all makes sense. In a way, if you're in the market segment that can only afford Jollibee products, you had to Jollibee. If you can afford a higher priced version of Jollibee's products, you head to Burger King, which is still owned by Jollibee. So in a way, Jollibee is everywhere. In 2012, Jollibee makes another acquisition by taking 50% of the Superfoods group. Now, this acquisition is important just because of the scale of it all. You see, the Superfoods group has a major presence in Southeast Asia, especially Vietnam. JFC is particularly pumped about Vietnam because of the similarities of the economic growth of Vietnam and the Philippines. Vietnam has a population of over 95 million. The Philippines has 104.9 million. Both are in Southeast Asia, both are developing countries, and in terms of culture, similarities are present. But now, in terms of investment, companies are already choosing Vietnam over the Philippines. So if Jollibee did well in the Philippines, it sees the potential of what it can do in Vietnam. Not necessarily assuming it guarantees that if they did well in the Philippines, it'll do well there, but it does give JFC an opportunity to expand to a territory that is ripe for investment, making this Superfoods Group acquisition an exciting move. They would only acquire 50% of the Superfoods Group, but later in 2017, they would raise this to 60%, giving them ownership. So why are they doing this? It's because they're preparing for an IPO in Vietnam. Also, this acquisition gives JFC presence in four new foreign territories, Indonesia, Cambodia, Malaysia, and Australia. Aside from locations, they also get a chain of Highlands Coffee Shops, the Hard Rock Cafe franchise, and branches of Fo24. And that's why I think it's a major milestone. It sets the tone for JFC's direction and Tony's ambition. We're talking expansion to Southeast Asia, and JFC raking in more capital. And the last time JFC had an IPO in the Philippines, it was able to use it to buy these big brands that became market leaders. Now think about what they can achieve after their IPO in Vietnam. Another massive territory that Jollibee is trying to build a presence in is in the US. Jollibee already opened its first US location back in 1998, but since then, they aren't really seeing the same rate of expansion. By 2014, they would only have around 27 locations in the US. With the standards of JFC, it's a bit of an underperformance, especially since they have opened more locations in the US, only to see several of them close after operating briefly hoping to improve their situation. In 2015, they acquired 40% of Smashburger for 335 million US dollars or 17 billion pesos. 
quick background on Smashburger, it was founded in 2007 by Tom Ryan and Rich Shaden. Together, they launched Smashburger. This was part of the new trend of Better Burger Restaurants, which is in the same category that Shake Shack and Five Guys falls on. On the date of purchase, Smashburger would have over 300 locations. By December of 2018, they would take 100% full ownership of Smashburger and will reportedly inject $80 million of capital to Smashburger. JFC seems set in having stronger growth in the US, and most recently, they've opened a branch in New York. They also said they'll be rapidly increasing, going from 37 locations to 150 locations in the next 5 years. They also acquired a 47% stake in Tortas Fonterra, marking their entry into the US-Mexican fast food category. And most recently, JFC has agreed to a 50-50 deal to bring Panda Express to the Philippines. These are all big moves for Jollibee, and I really thought that Jollibee would stop here, at least until I'm done uploading this episode. But in July of 2019, news said that Jollibee Worldwide, a subsidiary of Jollibee Foods Corporation, is investing 350 million US dollars or around 17.9 billion pesos to fully acquire United States based the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Coffee Bean becomes Jollibee's largest multinational venture so far, having locations in 27 countries, most notably in the United States, Singapore, Kuwait, Qatar, and India. The brand has over 1,189 outlets as of December 2018. Jollibee chairman and founder Tony Tan Kaktyong says the deal will bring Jollibee closer to its vision to be one of the top 5 restaurant companies in the world in terms of market capitalization. This was a big step for Jollibee, but one many of us didn't see coming, considering the recent acquisitions they have made which would make you think that they would first try to recover what they've spent. In fact, Smashburger, the US-based burger chain they acquired 7 months prior, is still hurting their stock price since it still hasn't been positively contributing to Jollibee's earnings. But this is expected from every acquisition, since investments are made to improve the newly acquired brand. Same thing goes for their acquisition of Coffee Bean. But what investors are worried about, especially in the short-term point of view, is the performance of Coffee Bean in the previous years. You see, Coffee Bean has been incurring losses in the past few years. In 2018, it recorded a loss of over $21 million, and in 2017, a loss of over $26 million. So this will definitely pull JFC's stock price down. In fact, when news came about this acquisition, Jollibee's stock price went down by 8%. Investors are worried by the impact of adding a losing company, and they're basing this on the impact of the Smashburger acquisition, which caused a drop of 14.7% of its net income. Analysts say that if they didn't acquire Smashburger, Jollibee would have grown 9% for the quarter. But looking at it in the long term, Jollibee expects Coffee Bean to contribute 14% to its global system-wide sales and 26% to its total store network. One of the indirect benefits of this acquisition is Coffee Bean's presence in countries that Jollibee has yet to enter. This will provide a backdoor for Jollibee and its other leading brands, making it easier for them to enter those territories. As to whether this will work out for Jollibee or not, we'll have to wait and see. And so that's about it. Jollibee's journey from a single branch ice cream store to becoming the biggest fast food chain in the Philippines is incredible. When they were sorting out, it was hard to believe then that it would be as big as it is today. And so its current goal of being one of the top 5 restaurant companies in the world, it feels very ambitious. But it's not hard to see that they may actually be able to reach that goal considering the moves they're currently making. They have made a couple of risky acquisitions in Smashburger and Coffee Bean, but if they can flip those two in becoming leading brands, which is something they've been doing, you can only imagine how much bigger Jollibee can become. Currently, Jollibee is the biggest fast food chain in the Philippines. It also owns Mainasal, the second biggest fast food chain in the country, as well as Xiaoqing, the leading brand in the Chinese fast food category, and Greenwich, the biggest pizza chain in the Philippines. Let's just say that if you're visiting the Philippines, you will encounter several brands that Jollibee owns. In the next few episodes, we will dive deeper into a couple of these brands, so stay tuned. This is Chris, and I'll be back next time for another episode. By the way, if you want the audio version of this episode, I have them available on our podcast. They're actually released earlier than the YouTube video, so if you want early access, subscribe and listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on your favorite podcast app. If you wish to support the show, click the subscribe button and tell your friends about Brand Fever. You can also talk to us on Twitter. We're at Brand Fever. Thanks for watching another episode of Brand Fever.